I think at least everybody has been asked this question once. And if so, maybe you need to like recheck if you have good friends. But everyone gets asked, if you could be any animal, what animal would you be and why? I've probably been asked this since I was a little kid on the playground. So I hope you've thought about this question as well. I remember people always answering with that they wanted to be dolphins or birds. And it was always these animals that encapsulated a sense of freedom. That's why I'm sitting here with you today with some bunny ears and starting a new podcast called Bird Thoughts. My name is Lana and I am your host. I am starting this podcast to talk about this sense of freedom and freedom through fears. How to allow yourself to gain this higher sense of control in your life by overcoming your fears. And with that, I mean that I'm going to be the bunny of the episode because that was always my answer growing up. I always said that I wanted to be a bunny or sometimes a sloth, but it would depend how lazy I felt that day. But I'm excited to cover each episode with you where we're going to look at a different type of fear. We're going to interview guests who've overcame these types of fears or have some sort of knowledge. And then you can take those actionable steps through listening to this podcast to overcome all these difficulties. Now time for the disclaimer. I'm not a scientist. I have zero knowledge of any science of the phobias or fears that we're going to be talking about. I am simply coming from a place of I am scared of things too and I want to have this conversation one-on-one with you guys about how to kind of think about it as a regular person and not from a scientific point of view because if I spewed big words at you, I would be tired too. So, I also suggest that if you guys are concerned about any of your fears and they're really damaging and don't let you actually function in a daily lifestyle to go see an actual psychologist, don't use me. Um, That's my disclaimer for you guys. But with that, we can get started on today's topic. So with this idea of animals and their sense of freedom, we can look at the topic of like, what does that mean to be free and to feel free? Freedom represents this sense of autonomy and independence. And we all search that we want to rely on ourselves to do good and to be good and to represent our own values and who we are as people. And freedom allows us to do that. We're not projecting anybody else's ideas or thoughts, but we're doing it for ourselves. And we're doing this without constraints. The freedom part comes without limitations and allowing yourself to act freely. So it allows you to have this sense of empowerment and to start controlling your life, which is why people decide like, hey, I want to be a bird. And I totally get it because birds have this sense of no limitation. You can go anywhere, anytime you want, as long as you're not eaten by like, I don't know what birds, predators are. But anyways, anything like that. And It's this idea that we can fly or hop, in my case, towards pursuing these passions and dreams that we have without the constraints of something like, oh, what will my parents think? Or what will my community think? Or sometimes even, what do I think about myself? And it's so exciting to have these opportunities and to just go for them. To not overthink these decisions and how to get to where you want to be but to just be able to do them without these limitations that I'm talking about so freedom then if we were all to have this sense that we can control our own lives and do as we please with them what it allows us to do is this sense of fairness and justice that we're all equally running towards our dreams and we can be so much happier than we currently are and Everyone deserves this type of freedom and happiness. And that's why I am encouraging you through this podcast to let go of the fears that hold you back from having your own sense of freedom and to allow you to do what you actually want to do. Because even in my situation, if I would have allowed everybody to tell me what to do and what not to do or to feel as if I was constrained in any type of way, then I would have this situation where I wouldn't be able to talk to you guys in a bunny hat and have my whole university probably watching me thinking about what I'm actually doing. It's also this sense of taking charge of your own life and allowing it to be in your own hands. 
And this is so important because we search for this sense of predictability. And I want to wake up knowing that I can do what I want that day. But without these constraints and limitations, you're actually not sure. Sometimes it's like, who is deciding my fate and my future? And when you are the one in charge, it's always going to be you who's going to be making those decisions. Of course, you're still going to have outside opinions. Of course, you're going to have things to consider. But at the same time, it's you who comes up with those ideas and how it will apply to your decision making. So that's why it's so important to feel as if you don't have any mental constraint or burdens or weights on your shoulders telling you, hey, this is what you can and can't do in life. But it's actually you who says what you can and can't do in this lifetime. By giving yourself this sense of control and charge, it boosts your self-confidence and esteem by like 10,000. It's going to be so helpful to just then continue making those decisions. That's why you have to jump. And in my case, jump from the garden to the rest of the world to then actually decide, hey, you know what? Like... I have enough confidence to just to continue searching and exploring for all of these different opportunities and doors that would open for you by gaining this type of freedom and by gaining a sense of control of your life. And when you then start having this confidence to take these decisions or continuing to make these decisions, what ends up happening is that you kind of start to look at life in a more positive light, that you're going to see that there's so much out there that you can take on and you can do, and it's just going to come as a rolling ball of positivity, and your life is going to feel so much more satisfying than what it was when you allowed your fears to overcome and take over. Why I keep relating this to the sense of rabbits. I have been called bunny since longer than I can remember, but of course the French version, so I've been called lapin my whole life. And what I think then actualized into my life is the fact that I started becoming this bunny. Of course, like I'm a big homebody. Sometimes I'm very introverted, But at the same time, I love exploring this outside world. I love exploring the inside and the depths of myself through so many different methods, including journaling, meditation. But I also love to go find other ways and to explore the world outside of my own self and outside of my home or my borough and to find out what more is there out there. And why I put such an emphasis on fear is because I look at my life experiences and now I question if I would have had the fear to do these types of things would I actually have been able to do them and what I mean by that is about a year ago I decided to pick up everything it was time to go to university and I just said I'm going to Spain I always knew I wanted to go abroad had no idea how I was going to do it, but now I'm looking at it and I made it. I now live in Spain and I think that if I would have had that fear to leave my home, to leave where I know and where I'm comfortable, then I would have never made all the friends that I have or have all the experiences that being abroad allows you to do. And I've met kids. I went to high school with kids who were so scared of leaving their own home or making their parents upset by where they would go. And of course, it's valid. You want to be with home. You want to be with your parents. And my relationship has not been strained with my parents since I left. But at the same time, you have to make that consideration of what is best for me. And that's the purpose of talking about this is because the fear came from an outside view and I projected it not on myself. I'd allowed it to just exist. And as I allowed it to exist, I decided to make the best decision for me, which was going to school abroad. And then it also allowed me to do so many things. And talking about kids I went to high school with, you might see on this channel that I have videos from about uh, three, four years ago now, something like that. When I was in high school, I decided that I would start my own YouTube channel and I had zero experience. I had only watched other YouTube videos of people doing it and I decided, you know what? This is for me, I'm gonna do it. And I started planning and figuring out and just pretending like I knew what I was doing. But now, 
I have no problem posting myself on social media, being bold and showing who I am. And if I didn't take those steps and if 15 year old me was in my head like, oh my gosh, and especially during high school, because I think we all have very judgmental people we went to high school with. If I would have allowed them to get into my head and to instill this fear into me that was what will people think of me if I post this video or what will people think of me if I started talking about this topic then I would have never been able to have that self-expression and that later translated into self-confidence to be doing what I actually want to do so that also ties into embracing my likes and dislikes. If you see on this channel, I talk about a variety of different topics because I'm interested in a lot of different things. But at the same time, what's so interesting to me is the fact that if I didn't embrace my likes and dislikes and be honest about them, then I probably wouldn't have the genuine friends that I have today. So this is how I just reaped so many benefits from overcoming my fears. If I were to tell people that I was a huge Godfather fan, yet I've probably never seen the movie, <laughs> then I'd have issues. And I did that when I was growing up. I told people I liked things that they liked and that I wanted to be in their group and fit in. And I still do want to fit in but the answer is is that I don't want to fit in if I'm not being myself so I'm honest about what I like and don't like and if people want to judge me for that then I allow them to but I understand that I allow my fear of being judged to just exist and not to consume me or to allow me to overthink I once read um, by Joanne Posayevi that the best thing you can do is tell it to be like a little puppy and to go to bed. You have to train a puppy and tell them what to do and not do. And that's why it's so important that you allow in these moments for you to tell your fear to go sit in the corner because it's not playtime. With that, I'm not the first to talk about how to overcome your fears and I'm definitely no freaking professional, that's for sure. But what I can tell you is that we need to continue to have these conversations about what makes us scared and allow ourselves to be vulnerable and to have these sense of community and a place to go to talk about what's bothering you in your daily life. And that's why I am also here to talk about things that bother me in my daily life, that are obstacles to allow me to get to where I really want to be in life. Acknowledging the fact that we even have these fears is our first step towards it. Acknowledging that, yeah, sometimes I'm scared of what people are going to say of me or talking about later in um, next week's episode talking about how my fear my biggest fear also hinders my life and doesn't allow me to do everything I want so I'm working towards overcoming it but it's important to say like and realize by either self-reflection shadowing or just kind of observing yourself or asking your friends to observe you you can have this realization that oh you know what I understand what's stopping me and I, obviously, you're not going to get over it overnight, but you can start taking these steps to actually, or in my opinion, the better word, bunny hops, to get to where you actually need to be and get to where you want to be. Not because someone told you that, but because you are important. What allows us through these conversations with our community and acknowledging our own fears and saying, and stepping up and being like, I have this fear and I want to do better I want to be better and you want to attract more positivity in your life the best thing you can do for yourself is then you'll start seeing that all these coping mechanisms and strategies will come for you and present itself like maybe this podcast or maybe a book that you're going to end up loving will allow you to overcome this sense of what am I doing or what should I be doing and it allows you to move forward and then acknowledging it, talking about it, whether it's on in the comments of this video or in the comments on my Instagram, or maybe you'll find a conversation piece for your family and friends talking about this. It means that we're not alone and there's no need to feel isolated because sometimes I think that my biggest fear is something nobody else has, but I think that there's a lot of people who do. And we need to talk about this at the same time because of the fact that 
it shouldn't be so stigmatized. We shouldn't be taboo um, or worried that it's too taboo to talk about these situations because at the end of the day, the enlightenment from so many people and how other people have dealt with these types of situations will allow you to find ways and the best ways to then make it better to make yourself feel better, to make everyone around you feel better because sometimes we don't think about the impact we have on other people, but it's going to be so important then to find all these ways that we can be ourselves and help each other grow because at the end of the day, we all share the same garden. We all share the same earth. The best version of you is going to be the best for your community, to be the best for whatever sense you need to feel fulfilled. So I really suggest that you start having these conversations because it's going to empower you to face more challenges and just go for what you absolutely ever wanted. So I think I need to also go over why this is a journey and why have I just immediately associated gardens and bunnies and hopping (laughs) to just this idea of personal growth and using personal growth to overcome your fear. Now, what it is, is that I find that the rabbit hole can represent this idea of comfort and a rabbit will always feel safe in its rabbit hole. There's no better place to be, but it doesn't hinder a rabbit's response to then go outside in the real world and to embrace the aspect of exploring and stepping outside of its own comfort zone. So I also think that we should emulate this in our daily lives of this idea of what a rabbit does and step out of their comfort zone and explore what they need to explore. I also want to mention that bunnies have this sense of agility and adaptability, which is pretty freaking cool if you ask me. They always are running from a million different things and can change their approach and survival instinct to get where they need to be, whether that's safety or to the next meal. And that's almost how we need to be thinking is our next meal is our goal or safety is from away from our fears and to just kind of go for it. And I spent months thinking about this. I wasn't going to just show up and say that you should be a rabbit without actually having some decent reasons about it. So It's also this idea that if we want to step away from that, we can also see that a rabbit hole and how rabbits burrow are a representation of going into and delving into ourselves. And this is seeking the unpredictability of the outside. So we can have both is what is the outside world while also seeking that comfort in the burrow to go inside ourselves and figure out what What do we need to better ourselves to then go outside and show your best self off to your family and friends and maybe get to brag about it a little bit because that's always the fun part. We are constantly reminded of our personal growth journey and to also see that it's not only about the outside, but it's about the inside as well. And a rabbit prioritizes both. What we also see is that personal growth in this journey does not have to be linear. It's not a upward scale. I can tell you that when I start figuring, when I first started figuring out uh, personal growth, I had my ups, my downs, my moments where I wanted to throw everything off the table and say this crap doesn't work. And then the moments where I actually realized how much I gained from these responses and from looking into myself and also exploring and telling people and talking and having these conversations and acknowledging what is my best self and what is my worst self. So embrace all the twists and turns of your journey and don't be too hard on yourself. So that's also the priority of this podcast and the priority of these conversations we're going to be having. A rabbit hole I mean, I'm not one who explores them. I'm sure there's some National Geographic episode that does. But a rabbit's not required to stop digging. It can dig for as long as it wants to dig. And it can explore for as long as it wants to explore. So what I'm suggesting to you is the fact that you have to see yourself as this potential for unlimited growth. It's always going to have so many possibilities and offer you so much to start looking at what could you improve through looking at your fears?
So with that, I want to thank you guys so much for listening, but also at the same time to remember about trying to figure out first and identify these key parts of what makes us scared and understand that it's the sense of freedom and taking charge of your own life that allows you to grow this self-confidence and self-esteem, but also allows you to have this feeling of empowerment and embracing your life to the fullest. So with this acknowledgement, then to continue to grow that self-confidence, the self-esteem, you're going to allow yourself to also continue on and allow yourself to kind of become a bunny and it's going to provide this sense of adventure and excitement for new experiences and it's going to make sure that you are kind of a bold bunny and that might sound really stupid but at the same time it's really important to put an image to exactly where you want to be so I want to make sure that you guys tune in for next week where we're going to talk about a little bit for what is fears and what can we do to alleviate these fears so So I encourage you to start taking the steps we talked about today and think about what does acknowledging your fears mean to you? Where would it allow you to be? What are your goals and what is stopping you from achieving them so that you can come back and listen to these episodes and gain some more coping and strategies to just continue becoming your best self. Thank you so much for tuning in. And there's a reminder that you can find summaries on my Instagram, lanamilapin. And if you're listening on the podcast version of the episode, then you can tune in also to my YouTube channel where you can watch me bunny ears and all explain uh, more on these interviews and podcasts as there will be some extra clips and other moments that you can find on my YouTube channel. And if you're watching from the YouTube channel, you can find the audio version only so that when you're taking a walk, taking a shower or doing the dishes, you can also listen and make sure that you tune in. So thank you so much, and I will see you next time, bunnies. So remember to stick around. Mm -hmm.